Welcome to this week's episode of the Whitetail Watch produced by Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. Uh, first, I want to talk about what we've been seeing while hunting, and then uh, I'll dive into the, the uh, overall behavior and the changes that we can expect in the week ahead. I haven't seen a whole lot while hunting. Um, I've been spending most of my time hunting the field edges, and it's, it's a conservative approach that I use at this point in the season usually where I don't go into the, the bedding areas and I don't go very far into the cover until I feel like the bucks are moving more in daylight. Uh, so I haven't seen very much. Uh, and uh, But mine is a little bit of the exception to the rule. Ethan was out this morning and he had an encounter with a really nice buck that uh, um, he wasn't able to, to get the deer killed because he was self-filming and it all kind of fell apart for him in the end, unfortunately. But a uh, fully mature buck on a scrape, mid-morning, you know, perfect behavior for this phase of the rut. And then Alex was hunting on the edge of the public land up in Minnesota last night, and he shot a nice buck that was chasing does around. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that the, the does are in estrus yet. I mean, I'm not saying that, but, I, but the bucks are definitely more active more daylight active, and on the trail cameras, we're seeing that too. We're seeing a lot more activity around the scrapes, uh, more daylight activity around the scrapes. Um, so it's ramping up, but uh, you know, it's not what I would say full tilt yet. So I'm still, you know, again, my style is probably, you know, conservative almost to a fault, but uh, I'm still hanging back a little bit. So I'm gonna, we're gonna jump to the sponsors next, and then, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about behavior and strategies that we can use for the days ahead. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. Okay, so let's dive into what the deer are doing. Like I said, uh, we're seeing a lot of activity on the scrapes, more daylight activity there than what we've seen in the past. So if you've got a scrape line inside the timber, uh, ideally on a funnel, and even more ideally, a funnel between two doe bedding areas, that's gonna be a prime spot for the next few days, mornings and evenings. I've proven to myself at least that the field edges are not producing. Uh, the bucks aren't in those areas in daylight. My cameras are saying the same thing. You know, my experience you know, sitting there is showing me that there's nothing coming out in daylight and then the photos on my cameras are supporting that. But I am getting photos of bucks on scrapes and just kind of randomly moving through the timber during daylight, uh, again, back in, away from the fields. So if you can get someplace still reasonably conservative, I wouldn't pile right in on top of the doe bedding areas yet. You know, I think that's still a few days away. You know, in my mind, up until about November 5th, I focus on maybe the funnels and the scrape lines, and then past that point, then I go all in on the doe bedding areas because the bucks really aren't on the first hot doe yet. As soon as that starts to, to uh, shape up, then those doe bedding areas take off like crazy. And you'll see bucks all over the place in the mornings in those, uh, you know, in those locations. And I always feel like the first hot doe is sometime in the, say, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th of November. And then uh, after that, you really have to be focused more on just does in general. You know, the bucks are looking for does. You know, you need to be looking for the does too because that's where the bucks are going to be. So that's just my advice on the way that I'm going to play it. I've been conservative um, and, and uh, you know, I need to ramp it up. And if you've been doing the same thing, I think it's time you know, to step it up, get in the timber, and then by the end of this coming week, uh, be on the doe bedding areas. I have seen, uh, or we're seeing plenty of you know, cool weather in the forecast. So the weather's not gonna be a factor. You know, all through the next coming week, the extended forecast looks really good. You know, we're seeing temperatures that are at least seasonally average or below Nothing, I haven't seen a single day yet in the extended forecast that gave me any concern that the temperature was going to slow down the movement. So I, I think, you know, if you've got vacation time coming up, which probably a lot of you do, 
you know, after this coming weekend, you should be right in the mix. You should be right in the heat of it. Um, things should be good. And again, I'd be moving more and more into the doe bedding areas by, you know, sometime after the fifth. And that's gonna be as good as it gets now for the whole rest of the rut. Uh, mornings and to a lesser extent, the evenings. You know, I do like hunting around food a little bit in the evenings once in a while up until around the seventh. You know, after that, the does just aren't coming out as much. You know, they don't like being badgered by every buck that's, you know, out cruising around. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's my strategy uh, moving into the weekend and then into early next week. Uh, hopefully, you know, our crew continues to have success. You know, I know Ethan's going back after that buck again uh, this evening, and then I'm sure he'll hunt that deer until he finally gets him. That's a cool buck. And uh, now Carson's going to be hunting more in the permission ground in Iowa. Uh, since Alex is done up in Minnesota, he's going to have somebody to, you know, to, to film him in Iowa. We should have plenty to report, you know, each week from now on. The action is only going to keep getting better. The best day of the season, in my opinion, is November 7th. It just seems like there's a ramp up in buck activity. And, you know, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, that whole time frame is really, really good. So uh, make sure you're out there as much as you can. Uh, focus on the places where the does are concentrated, and you'll have plenty of success. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here in another week for the next episode of the Whitetail Watch. And remember to always dream big.